Good morning and welcome everyone. I forgot you can talk back to me. Sorry, I'll say that again. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, it's nice to be among people. It's good to see you all this morning and welcome to worship today. For the month of August, we're talking about communion. So Alice is our preacher today. And she said, welcome to confirmation class number two. So that'll be fun. Um, joining us online today, we've got um, Sandy, Alex, and Olivia. Welcome. It's good to have you with us this morning. Um, thank you for wearing your mask today. And I know it's uncomfortable, but it's all kind of keep each other safe. So. 
Appreciate that. Um, and with that, we will have communion today. Those of you joining at home, grab a little bread and wine, whatever that looks like in your kitchen will do. And um, for those of you joining us virtually, you can go ahead and have communion when we're done with that piece of liturgy. For those of you in person, we will give you communion as you leave the sanctuary today. With that, why don't we begin this morning worship with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains all of creation. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. To you, O oh God, all hearts are open. To you, all desires known. We come to you confessing our sins. Forgive us in your mercy and remember us in your love. Show us yeah. Teach us your paths. Meet us in justice and truth. For the sake of your goodness, in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. By water and the Holy Spirit, God gives you a new birth. And through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God forgives you all of your sins. The God of mercy and might strengthen you in goodness and keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let us sing.
And let us pray. Gracious God, your blessed Son came down from heaven to be the true bread that gives life to the world. Give us this bread always, that he may live in us and we in him, and that strengthened by this food, we may live as his body in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We continue this morning with God's word. First Corinthians chapter 11, verses 17 through 22. Now in the following instructions, I do not commend you, because when you come together, it is not for the better, but for the worse. For to begin with, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you, and to some extent I believe that Indeed, there have been factions among you, for only so who among you are genuine. When you come together, it is not really to eat the Lord's Supper, for when the time comes to eat, each of you goes ahead with your own supper, and one goes hungry, and another becomes drunk. What? Do you not have homes to eat and drink in, or do you show contempt for the church of God and humiliate those who have nothing? What should I say to you? Should I commend you? In this matter, I do not commend you. Word of God, word of life. Creator, our Savior, and our Redeemer. Said a few minutes ago, welcome to Confirmation 101, Session 2, Holy Communion. Today I am stepping back into my room. I'm sure that some of you are thinking to yourself, 
oh great, I'm already confirmed, and I really don't need to go over all this stuff again. I hear you. But if it helps, you can just think of it as talking out Riley. But the reality is, we can all use a refresher course once in a while. Who knows? Maybe you will learn something new. There might be someone here to whom this is all completely new, or maybe nothing will be new. Now, I would not be a very good teacher if I didn't give you a final exam when I finish my sermon. So fair warning. Yes, there will be an exam. It will contain only one question, and the answer is all who confess Jesus to be their Lord, confess Jesus to be their Lord and Savior. I'm the kind of teacher every kid wants. So, like any good teacher, I have written a course outline to keep me on track and to keep my sermon moving. So, first, what is communion? According to the dictionary, communion is a deep connection or sharing in common. When each of us stand at the communion rail, um, at least in non-COVID time, we have an opportunity to feel a deep connection to God, to Jesus Christ. Now, this may or may not happen each time we receive communion, but that is because of us humans. We come to the communion rail with our worries, concerns, joys, our personal baggage. God is there, ready to receive us as we show up. But we can also mean sharing in common, and we do share in common. Together we share this meal given to us by Christ himself, which leads to point two in my outline. Where does communion come from? Communion is one of two sacraments the Lutheran Church, uh, in the Lutheran Church, the other being baptism. According to Martin Luther, we Lutherans recognize two standards for designating a rite as a sacrament. The Catholic Church has seven sacraments, but only baptism and Holy Communion have the requirements of A, the sacrament needs to have an earthly element attached to it, such as water and baptism, or the grape of the wine or juice, or the grain and the grain and the bread at communion. And B, Jesus commands us to practice these sacraments. As we heard in our gospel reading two weeks ago, Jesus commanded his disciples to go and baptize. Jesus tells us to eat and drink in remembrance of him. We are only commanded to do these two rites, these two sacraments. Jesus ate and drank with many, many people during his ministry. In fact, it seems like he was almost always having a meal or preparing for a meal in most of the gospel stories. Jesus tells Zacchaeus to come down from the tree and to go prepare a meal for him. Jesus feeds 5,000 people with only two fish and five loaves of bread. But the most significant meal story for us today is what has become known as the Last Supper. Jesus and his disciples are gathered in Jerusalem to observe the Jewish holiday of Passover. They gathered in a small room, sitting at a table, breaking unleavened bread and drinking wine. Jesus blessed the bread, blessed the wine. Jesus knew he was about to die. He knew that his ministry was over. But Jesus also knew that his disciples would react, or Jesus also knew how his disciples would react to what was about to happen. Jesus knew that he must leave his disciples something to help them go on, to continue his work. But not just his disciples, us too. Jesus made a covenant with all of us, a covenant sealed with his body and blood. This covenant, this deep abiding promise is to never leave us, to always forgive us, and to always, always love us. Which is 
outline, outline point number three. Why communion is important. Communion is our reminder that no matter how when we feel Jesus is right there besides us, he is deeply sharing in our lives. He is the shoulder we lean on or cry into when life gets just gets to be just a touch too much for us. This covenant of his, that is why we take communion, to be reminded that Jesus loves us, Jesus forgives us, that Jesus is always with us. Point four in our outline, who qualifies for communion? This can actually be a tricky question. In some churches, you need to special instruction and have a big fancy ceremony. In some churches, they refuse to give communion to small children. Some parents want their kids to have communion only when they're older. When they're older. Others, as soon as the child can understand what Holy Communion is. It may vary by denomination, synod or ruling body, or even by individual churches and pastors. There are churches where Pastor CJ, <clears throat> sorry, Pastor CJ could walk into and she would be denied Holy Communion because she is ELCA, not the exact denomination of that particular Lutheran church. And yes, I do personally know of one of these churches, of these Lutheran churches. But here at Zion, in the ELCA, there's only one thing, one requirement for taking Holy Communion. <clears throat> Sorry. Do you confess Jesus to be your Lord and Savior? For all who confess Jesus to be their Lord and Savior are welcome at the table. All are welcome to eat and drink as commanded by Jesus. This is the only qualifier. Do you believe? Jesus doesn't care who you are, how much money you make, the tone of your skin, the style of your hair. Jesus doesn't give a snap about how long it's been since you've been in church or how much community service you performed this week. Jesus only asks that you believe in him. Then you are more than welcome at his table. Jesus won't turn you away. He loves, he forgives, he is with you always. There is one item that does need to be cleared up at this point. If we are eating bread and drinking wine, and that is the body and blood of Jesus, are we cannibals? The answer is no. No, we are not cannibals. That this is probably one of the toughest things to understand or explain in the Lutheran church. When the bread and the wine are blessed, they don't magically turn into the flesh and blood. Neither are they simply symbolic, standing in for Jesus' flesh and blood. Luther openly admitted that he didn't know how they transformed into the flesh and blood of Jesus. But Uncle Martin had faith that they did, because Jesus said they did. According to the Augsburg Confession, one of the documents upon which the Lutheran faith is grounded on, is based on, it is taught among us that the true blood, body and blood of Christ are really present in the supper of our Lord under the form of the bread and wine and are distributed and received. Jesus blessed by We believe Jesus. Wine is a pretty basic one vocabulary for, um, I mean, I was an English teacher, just saying. At least there won't be a spelling test this week. There are many different names for communion. A few of the more common ones are Eucharist, which is a Greek word meaning Thanksgiving, the Lord's Supper, the Sacrament of the Altar, Holy Communion, different names that all mean the same thing the sharing of the body and blood of Jesus Christ. The plate, 
which holds the bread is called a paten. And the bread, or in this case today, a wafer, bread or wafer, that the paten holds is called the host. I'm sorry, I don't know why it's called the host. Maybe somebody else can let me teach the teacher. The wine is in a pitcher called a flagon. And the pastor pours the flagon, the wine out of the flagon, and into a chalice. It's a large cup. The linen napkin that is placed on top of the chalice is called the veil. Finally, the last word you might want to know is intinction. Intinction is a method of distribution where you dip the host into the chalice, into the wine, instead of having a cup of wine handed to you. And no, there's no real wine in here, otherwise I would have spilled it long before. So, so you survived my confirmation 101 lecture. As I said at the start, for some of you, this is all old hat. You already knew, all, knew it all. Some of you might have learned something new. And for a few of you, this was mostly new insight into the sacrament of Holy uh, Communion. There are two points I want you to walk away with. The first point is that Jesus did, in fact, make a covenant, a promise to you, to all of us. This promise is renewed each time you hear the words, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. This covenant, this promise is to always love you, to always forgive you, and to always be with you forever. The second point is that Jesus is worthy no matter what. All who confess Jesus to be their Lord and Savior are welcome at the Lord's table. So, final exam time. One question and only one question. Who are welcome at the community table? All who confess Jesus to be their Lord and Savior. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for sending Jesus to show us your love. Thank you, Jesus, for sharing your special meal so you can be with us. Thank you, Spirit, for filling us with love so we can share it with everyone else. Amen.
across time and space, we confess our faith this morning with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. Seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last. Just one quick update before we dive into our prayers this morning. Bill Robbins has been dealing with some foot issues. So, you know, in true Bill form, he's like, I'm okay, I'm okay. But, you know, he's in a fair amount of pain. So we will up our prayers for Bill as he hopefully heals up. For all of our prayer petitions today, I will end by saying, God, in your mercy and your responses, hear our prayer. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation. For the Church of Christ in all its diverse forms, for mission developers, new starts, and all communities of faith exploring new models of ministry for the sake of the gospel. For congregations discerning their future, especially Messiah, Augustana, and us, Zion. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the health and well-being of creation, for shade trees that provide refuge from the hot summer sun, for lakes, rivers, and oceans contaminated by pollution, and for Minnesota and other places in a state of drought, and all who lack clean water. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are called to positions of authority in our legal system, for judges, lawyers, law clerks, and court employees who ensure the fair administration of justice, for correction officers and prison chaplains, that they would deal mercifully with those who are incarcerated, and for all in leadership positions as we continue to live in the midst of pandemic. God of mercy. Hear our prayer. For all who cry out to you in their affliction, for exiles, refugees, and others who face long and difficult journeys, uncertainty about the future, for all who mourn the death of a loved one, for all who are sick and in need of healing, especially Danny, Amy, John, Marie, and Harlan. Amy, Ruth Ann, Bill, Peggy, Larry, Angela, Sherwood, and those in our hearts this morning that we now name before you. Lord, you hold us in your tender care. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who have been raised to eternal life, we give you thanks. With all the saints, we praise you for the bread of life that keeps us in your life. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift these prayers and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you all. Yes. You're invited to share a safe sign of peace with your neighbors. All right, before this turns into a rock concert, we'll continue with our offering, uh, we aren't passing around the offering plates, but we will have one at the exits for you. 
um, that you may drop your eyes. to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. I'm gonna sit at the welcome table. I'm gonna sit at the welcome table one of these days. I'm gonna sit at the welcome table. Gonna sit at the welcome table one of these days. All God's children gonna sit together. All God's children gonna sit together one of these days. All God's children gonna sit together. All God's children gonna sit together these days. Jesus showed God's love in so many ways. Welcoming children, forgiving sinners, healing sick people, teaching God's love, helping poor and hungry people. Jesus was friends with people who were hated, made fun of, and treated badly. One of the ways Jesus showed love was yes. Yes, 
We remember Bible stories about Jesus sharing meals. Jesus invited himself to eat with Zacchaeus at his house. Zacchaeus was surprised at Jesus' loving acceptance. Jesus fed thousands of people on a hillside with only a little bread and fish. There was plenty to go around after he blessed and broke the bread. And everyone was surprised at Jesus' generosity. Jesus gathered his best friends for a meal we call the Last Supper. He picked up the bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and shared it with them, saying, Whenever you share this bread, I will be with you, feeding you, loving you, and forgiving you. And then he picked up the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, Whenever you share this cup, I will be with you quenching your thirst, loving you, and forgiving you. Jesus' friends were surprised at his open-hearted love. For Holy Communion is a gift for all people, and we celebrate it today. Remembering Christ's love for us on the way at this table and to the end, we proclaim the mystery of faith. For Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. We pray for the gift of your Holy Spirit in our gathering, within this meal, among your people, throughout the world. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, Holy God, through Christ Jesus, by your Spirit in your church, without end. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father, Mother, God in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. In the sacrament of Holy Communion, we are welcomed to Jesus' table as friends, just as Jesus welcomed strangers, healed sick people, forgave sinners, and helped people who are poor, hungry, or scared. We are now a part of that way. We get to welcome, heal, forgive, and help. As friends of Jesus, we do our best to love people generously, just as he loved his friends, and just as he loves you. In this special meal, Jesus is with us feeding us, loving us, forgiving us, and asking us to do the same for the people around us and around the world. So let us welcome one another to Holy Communion. Welcome to Jesus' table. We rejoice with you and thank God for you. Enjoy this meal that strengthens us to live as Jesus did. For Christ has set the table with more than enough, and all God's people said, Amen. If you're joining us virtually now, I invite you to go ahead and have communion where the body of Christ is given for you and the blood of Christ is shed for you. Amen. Some quick announcements. Um, today after worship, you all are invited to join us downstairs in the banquet hall for some ice cream and a conversation with our vision team to hear some important updates of things that we have been learning and discovering. And we want to hear from you too. What are your questions? What are you wondering about? Um, so I hope you can stick around for that. Um, yeah, um, some other updates for you. Uh, Nidra's funeral, which was scheduled for 828, has been postponed. Um, she gave the boys strict instructions that she wanted a traditional funeral with a traditional lunch. And we want to be able to honor that um, when it's safe to do so. So we're postponing it once more, and we'll keep you in the loop on that. Um, next week, we will not be here or here. We will be over at Augustana. So coffee hour, they've invited us for coffee hour before church. Whoa, I know, something different. But I mean, it feels like, let's get our caffeine in early. And I can get behind that. So 9.30 to 10.30, they are offering coffee fellowship for us outside. And then they will also have worship outside in their parking lot. 
at 10 30. Um, you are they will have chairs but you're invited if you have a comfy camp chair that you'd rather sit in by all means you can bring that so, um okay i think that is it that's all i had does anyone else have thanks to emily and diane for today it's lovely to hear the organ so thank you and receive this blessing May the blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Let us sing our sending hymn. Thank you.